BP learning video, we're going to cover the Nano. The Nano is an Arduino compatible device. As you can see, and you can see it right here. So you might be wondering, well, what is Arduino? Well, Arduino is actually a full computer in a small package. Now, when I say full computer, I don't mean that it runs Windows or Mac or anything. What I mean is that it has um, all of the functionality. Um, to perform any computation um, that you might require. Okay, and so this is the actual chip right there that is does the computation, and this is known as a microcontroller. Okay, and that means that it's all the pieces of a computer wrapped into a single easy to use package. And so rather than this doesn't this computer doesn't have a screen and it doesn't have a keyboard. Instead of any of those things, it uses electrical signals to communicate back and forth. So it might use a positive voltage to mean something, and it might communicate back with a positive or zero voltage uh, communicate back. And so um, in this video, we we use the Nano for uh, several of our um, several of our projects, and uh, but. First, it's good just to learn how to use the Nano all on its own. So we're going to just show how to make a very simple program to blink a light that's already on the Nano. Now let's take a, a, a brief look at the Nano. As we said, it was Arduino compatible. What does that mean? Well, Arduino is a set of, um, it's, based, it's, it's almost like a community. It's a set of uh, standards, standard tools, standard chips, standard ways of doing things uh, that make it easier to program microcontrollers, make it easier to program and use them. So uh, it come, there's a software program called Arduino, which allows us to put programs to both write and install programs onto our chip. Um, and then there's also some standard uh, pins that it has, standard labeling for the pins, things like that. So um, in our Arduino, um, this is the USB port. And so the, this serves two purposes. One is that this is where it's powered from. You can actually power it through one of its pins, but that's a little bit more complicated. Um, it's easiest just to power it through its USB port. And it also uses the USB port to load new versions of the code. Now once the code's on there, it doesn't need uh, your computer um, to run it, you can connect this just straight to a some sort of USB power source. Um, but it does need uh, your computer to actually install the program onto here. And so um, these do not come pre-equipped with the programs we want them to run. Um, that's part of the the learning is learning how to load the program onto this device. Okay, so. Um, You'll notice that the pins stick out underneath, and that's actually perfectly suited for sticking in a breadboard, like that. And so we can take these and we can, and so the breadboard can then hold the Arduino in place. Oh, I'm going to put the uh, USB port out so we can easily connect it to our computer. And we can just kind of wiggle that into its socket. That side doesn't want to go in. There we go. So once you wiggle that into its socket, now you can use it just like you would a chip. Now notice that each of these outputs are actually labeled. And so um, that says ground, reset, receive, and transmit. And you, on, on a Nano, um, you don't really need to worry about those pins. Uh, D2 is digital pin 2, D3 is digital pin 3, and these can be used for input or output. 
d4, d5, d6, d7, d8, d9, d10, d11, d12. All right, so um, on the other side, we have pins like a1, a2, and these are analog input and output. The d1s are digital, the a1s are analog, and they're only used for input. So um, it's kind of a quick overview of what these are. All right, now that we have the nano in the breadboard, we don't actually, we didn't actually have to put it in the breadboard, but that's how most of our projects will be. Um, we can now connect it uh, to a power through its USB. So we'll just take the USB cable, plug it in. And then voila, it is on. So um, now that it, now that we have it plugged in, we can load code onto it. And the way we do that is by using um, what's known as the Arduino IDE. And so the Arduino IDE is a program that we can load onto our computer that we can use to write and download programs to our Arduino compatible device. The Arduino IDE is available for pretty much any uh, computer. You can run, it runs on Mac, it runs on Windows, it runs on Linux, pretty much anywhere you can have a computer you can run Arduino. Um, additionally, this, uh, the, this Nano requires a driver um, for the USB port. So it's called the CH340 driver. Um, you can find links to both the driver and to the Arduino IDE on the BP Learning website. Um, so what does an Arduino program look like? Well, most Arduino programs have two basic pieces. There is a setup function, and in the setup function, usually what they do is they put, um, they um, tell it which pins are gonna be used for input and which pins are gonna be used for output. Um, there's also some other setups that are, are done by some programs, but uh, pretty much any task, this, this function runs as soon as the, um, our, the, the nano is turned on, and it never runs again. Um, and then this is the loop function, and this runs over and over and over again as long as the nano is on. So it will continue to run this, and as soon as it gets to the end, it'll just run it again. And so all the control logic that you want goes into this function, okay? So now thankfully, um, you know, this isn't a series really on programming. Um, so we're not gonna go into any depth in, into how the Arduino is programmed, but the Arduino comes with um, several example programs that we can use. So if you go into examples, there's a basics folder, and in the basics folder, there is a program called Blink. And if you click on that, um, you will get the Blink program. And this is a program um, that is built by, it, it ships with the Arduino IDE, and it can be downloaded onto your Arduino. So uh, this area is the part where you put in the program. And let's, before you go into how the program works, let's look at the interface a little bit. This button right here, uh, it's the verify button. You click that and it verifies that there's no errors in the program. If there were any errors, they'd show up down here at the bottom, but if it ends saying um, that Sketch uses so many bytes of program storage space, uh, then it, it, it is successfully verified. Um, so that's the verification step. You don't have to verify your programs, but I find it, it just makes it easier to, to, to solve problems. Programming is difficult because if you have even a semicolon out of place, things don't work. Um, so once you have your program right, you can hit the upload button, and the upload button uh, will send the program to the Arduino. So when you hit the upload button, you'll actually see it on your Arduino, there's some lights that blink. And then as soon as it's done, see that program causes that light to blink on and off. And so let's look at the code a little bit. This In the setup function, this pin mode calls pin mode, which causes certain pins to be set up as input and output pins. 
and there's a built-in pin for an LED and it's called the LED built-in pin it's set up for output mode so then the loop function runs over and over and over again and so it takes our built-in LED pin and turns it high and what it means by high it means it's going to put out an electrical si signal to it and so in this case it's a 5 volt output so it sends 5 volts to that pin so then it delays 1000 milliseconds okay this is the number of there are a thousand milliseconds in a second so this really means delay one second okay so we'll turn the LED on it will give 5 volts to the LED pin and then it'll keep that going um, for a second because and actually keep keep it going until you tell it otherwise but in this very next program line we're gonna turn it off we're gonna set it to low which means zero volts so we're gonna set that pin to be at zero volts and then we're gonna wait another second and then we get to the end of the end of the function so it just starts all over again it turns it high waits a second turns it low waits a second does it again, turns it high, waits a second, turns it low, waits a second. So you can see that it's blinking about once every second. Now, we can adjust this because this is just a program and we can modify it however we want. We can modify it so that it goes 10 times as fast. Now to go 10 times as fast, that means it goes, it, the delay between pauses is a tenth as long of a delay. So we'll take off a zero there um, this will be a tenth of what it was, so now it will only delay for 100 milliseconds. So we'll verify it, and yes it's verified, and then we'll upload it. And you can see that it is now blinking much, much faster. So you can see that you have your program here, and when you modify your program, that sends it, um, you hit the upload button, it sends it through the USB cable to your nano, and so um, now once it once the once the program is on here, it's actually loaded onto this chip. So um, that's actually where it's stored. So once it's loaded, we don't need the computer for anything except for power. Um, so you could actually take this and plug it into a wall uh, outlet that has a USB out or anything like that to supply the power, um, a mobile power brick or anything like that. Um, we only need the computer to load the the initial program on here, but once it's programmed, then it's all set to go. So that's our Arduino compatible Nano, and we use this for several different projects. Anytime we need a uh, complicated logic, we can store the logic into um, this chip because it basically has all the all of the the logic features of a full computer. So I hope you enjoy your Nano um, and that you do lots of cool things with it.